Today we're going to be reviewing the brand new Toyota Corolla. Now unlike most reviews that review the driving dynamics, the stereo system, as well as the number of cup holders, we're going to be taking a look under the hood and underneath the vehicle to see what's inside and how it works. Now taking a look underneath the hood at a glance here, we have the 2 liter 4 cylinder M20A FKS Toyota engine situated on the passenger side. Then on the driver's side we have the battery and airbox and down below that we have the CVT. Now the powertrain is situated transversely because this vehicle is front wheel drive only. Now some of the major components in the engine are your cooling and washer tank, a relay fuse box on the right side of the vehicle, in the front we have the radiator and cooling fan assemblies, and then over here on the left side we have a bunch of new technology here that we're going to discuss. We've got the air box, the battery, the braking system over here, another fuse box, as well as the ECU sandwich in between here. Now taking a look underneath this engine here, you can see that it is fairly serviceable being a four cylinder inline engine. At the top here we have the four ignition coils of which the spark plugs are really easy to get to. We've also got this plastic valve cover which isn't too hard to service but I don't like the fact that it's actually plastic. We have the oil filler cap here. Now this engine actually takes 0W16 weight oil. Next up underneath the engine we have the direct injection pump which is driven off of the exhaust camshaft at the back here. That's right this engine has both direct and port fuel injection so the low pressure from the fuel tank will come into this port over here and the low pressure pump for the fuel tank is actually located underneath the rear seat over here the low pressure line will continue back out to feed the port injectors which are up at the top here and here's a look at that fuel rail with the fuel injectors down below here we've also got a pressure sensor for the fuel rail the high pressure is going to be pumped out of the pump and pumped down underneath the air intake here to be pumped directly into the cylinder and the exhaust cam lobe is going to ride up against this piston up and down here and that's going to create a pressure here that's going to be sent out to the direct injectors. That clicking sound is actually coming from the direct fuel injection pump and the injectors themselves. Next up we have the EGR system and the EGR system is in place for pollution control where it takes those exhaust gases cools them down and then brings them back into the intake. Here we have the EGR valve and that has its own track here that leads back up into the intake. Now behind it we've also got the EGR cooler inside of here so the exhaust gases actually have to pass through it to get cooled down by liquid coolant before going back into the intake to get reburned. Now the air intake system is fairly straightforward. It actually draws warm engine air from inside of here. It gets sucked through this little tube here into the air intake box. It passes through the mass airflow sensor and then into the throttle body which is drive by wire before going into the plastic intake plenum and then into the engine head. Now on the front of the engine on the right side of the vehicle we have a static engine mount. We've also got the drive belts on this side here. This is the alternator with the AC compressor being further down below and it is fairly easy to access inside of here in case you need to change it. We've also got the timing cover over here under which we have a timing chain which is good because that doesn't need to be serviced and here we have the two variable valve timing controller. Now the variable valve timing on this engine is pretty unique. We have them on both the intake and the exhaust cam. Now the one in the exhaust cam is just a typical oil filled variable valve timing gear and we have its oil control valve over here. Now the intake variable valve timing actuator is actually electronically controlled. Now the controller's got an electric motor inside with a gear set that allows the speeding up or slowing down of the cam gear relative to the camshaft to adjust cam timing. Now accessing the air filter in one of these is pretty straightforward. Just two clips over here and then the whole box pops out and then we can pull out the air filter. So with the battery and the air box removed you can see we have clear access to the ECU here which I think is kind of in a dangerous spot being not far from the front of the vehicle. We've also got the drive-by wire throttle body over here, the EGR cooler which we've mentioned earlier as well as the fusible links on the positive battery terminal. Next taking a look at the braking system we have the brake master cylinder over here and its reservoir. We've also got the brake booster over here. Now there is this sensor over here for the vacuum and that's because this vehicle does not use engine vacuum to drive the brake booster. It actually uses this vacuum pump over inside of here that's driven off of the exhaust cam gear. The vacuum pump's got a vane on the inside that spins around inside of the housing to create that vacuum on the inlet. Now over on the passenger side of the vehicle, continuing with the braking system, we have the brake actuator that sits way inside of here and that's responsible for the ABS brakes, traction control, stability control, as well as the autonomous braking features that are standard on this car. Speaking of autonomous features, we have the millimeter radar sensor in and behind this logo over here and we've also got the airbag sensor on the rad support. How many relays and fuses do you think are in this box? Just three. At least there's more fuses on this side near the ECU. Now we're going to take a look at the cooling system. Now traditionally we have the radiator and an electronically controlled radiator fan up at the front there. 
What's interesting though is the radiator cap is actually on the overflow reservoir and it's just made of simple plastic and that's what actually holds pressure in the cooling system. Now what's cool about this cooling system is it actually is powered by an electric water pump instead of a traditional belt style drive and is situated just below the alternator down inside of here. If I come around here you can see we have the electrical connector for it inside of here and then there's also a built-in thermostat housing that'll take the coolant from the lower radiator hose coming off here and feed it into the engine. Now the entire cooling system as laid out here is actually a closed loop control system with major components being the radiator, the thermostat and electronic water pump, the throttle body, the EGR cooler, the transmission cooler, the heater core, and even an oil cooler at the back of the engine. So here we have a look at the transmission which is situated on the left side of the vehicle here. It's electronically controlled and its valve body is located in the front of the vehicle over here behind this plastic baffle. We've also got an integrated cooler in down here that runs engine coolant through the transmission to cool it off. And here we have the valve that controls the flow of that coolant. Now what sucks about the CVT is it's not that serviceable. You actually need a vacuum gauge, an air compressor, and some TechStream software if you want to properly fill up this transmission fluid in case you need it to service it. Now taking a look underneath the new Corolla you can see everything is fairly flat and aerodynamic and that's because of all these plastic panels covering everything up underneath. And here's what it looks like with the engine undercover removed. You can see we have clear access to all the components underneath the vehicle. Now taking a look underneath the engine we have the oil pan over here and we have the drain plug which is easy to access. We've also got a spin-on style filter unlike the cartridge filters of the old days. We've got easy access to the AC compressor over here and its drive belt. And then further back here we have the oil pump underneath the timing cover that's actually electronically variable and controlled by this solenoid over here. Now the oil pump is an impeller type and it's got a housing here that can move with the oil pressure in the top chamber here and that will move the impellers relative to the pinion changing the oil pressure. Now if we look a little further up from the oil pan you can see we've got the CV axle that comes out of the differential in the transmission and if you look a little further up this way against the firewall you can see we have the ABS motor which is over there and we've also got this exhaust manifold which is this big foily thing that comes off of the engine here and hidden underneath that is a catalytic converter before it goes out to the back. Now this vehicle has three engine mounts, one on either side and this one underneath. It's made of an alloy material that's meant to actually break in a collision to drop the engine and transmission assembly down underneath the vehicle instead of smashing it into the firewall. So here we've got a good view of the transmission. This is the cooler over here that has this line that leads out to this electronically controlled valve over here. We've got the valve body for the transmission here and the drain plug located back here. Now up inside of the rear of the transmission we have the transmission control unit that controls all of the electronics. Now at the front of the engine we have the oil level sensor in the pan over here and clear easy access to the starter motor. Now as for the cooling system we have the fan controller up here and the fan itself. We've also got the upper radiator hose here. It's not actually situated near the top it's somewhere near the middle of the radiator. Then we have the lower radiator hose on this side here that leads into the thermostat housing and the electronic water pump before going into the engine. Now we're going to have a look at what's behind the wheel here starting with of course the front where we've got a McPherson style front suspension over here and we've got the stabilizer link that's attached to it that comes down to the sway bar out in the front here. And in front of that we have a single piston caliper for the front brakes. Now we have a strong steel spring seat at the top here followed by a steel knuckle that has no camber adjustment adjustments by these two bolts here and then we have the CV axle and the inner and outer tie rods where it connects to the knuckle. Now the bottom here we have a stamp steel lower control arm and nothing blocking these bushings like engine mounts like in past Toyotas so they're pretty easy to service and if I follow this lower control arm we have this bolt-on style ball joint that's fairly easy to service you don't really need to press or anything. Now if we follow the inner tie rods back we get the steering rack which is actually electronically controlled by a motor underneath the dashboard and if you look at the gap underneath the steering column and the knee airbag you'll see the electric motor inside of there attached to the steering column. Overall the front suspension is pretty basic this is an economy car which means it won't offer you the best in handling but it will offer you the best in maintenance and repairs come 200,000 kilometers. Now the rear of the vehicle is where the TNGA platform really shines through because it's now got a brand new rear independent suspension compared to a twist beam suspension in previous models and this is going to offer a little bit better handling and cornering. Now we start here with the spring which is attached to the rear lower control arm. There is a toe adjustment over there. We've also got the upper control arm which is this wavy one over here. Now moving over to this side over here you can see we have the front lower control arm here. We have this shock absorber and then over here we have this control blade which acts like a trailing arm. Now attached to that control blade at the back here is the stabilizer link 
and that goes to the sway bar which goes over here to this bushing to the other side. Now what's unique over here is this little nut here which faces the wheel could get dirt and grime in these threads and in this internal hex so they've actually included this neat little cover here so that come time to replace the sway bar link that hex doesn't rust out and strip out. That's a pretty cool idea. Now the rear brakes are fairly straightforward just a single piston caliper that squeezes this disc rotor over here. Parking brake setup is the much hated electronic parking brake setup with this little motor actuator inside of here that squishes this disc together when you put the vehicle in park. So here we have a look at the rear suspension from underneath the vehicle. You can see that it actually uses a steel knuckle with bolted on bearings which is good because it's easy to change out without using a press. Got a built in ABS sensor over there. Over here we have the sway bar link and the sway bar itself that runs over to the bushing and that could definitely use some easy upgrading. And then finally we have this cam bolt here that adjusts the toe. Check out this huge pocket over here where this trailing arm actually bolts up to. Now instead of welding the subframe shut they've actually just added this plastic cap to prevent dirt and debris from going inside. Now the fuel system is comprised of this plastic gas tank and we've got this filler neck that's all underneath the rear seats. The EVAP system is actually up over here where we have the vacuum pump that pumps vacuum to check for detection leaks inside of the EVAP system and then the charcoal canister over here. On the top of the engine here we have this line that comes from the gas tank to purge exhaust vapors back into the intake through this valve over here. Now the exhaust system is fairly straightforward. After the header and the first catalytic converter we have this O2 sensor. The exhaust then flows through this catalytic converter. And then from the secondary cat it flows through this mid silencer and then out through the tailpipe to the muffler. And then the muffler has a single center inlet and a single outlet on the right side that's below the bumper so you can't see it behind the vehicle. Now that's pretty much all you need to know about the mechanicals of the 2019 Toyota Corolla. Make sure you subscribe because next time we're going to be reviewing a different type of Toyota.